So now we hear two very interesting use cases, very different use cases for um, implementing institutional change. And um, yeah, we have some time uh, if you would like to ask our speakers some questions. Um, you can just type them into the chat or you can, I think you can also raise your hand if you would like to ask them directly. <clears throat> uh, in the meantime, can I ask one quick question? Yes. If that's possible. So basically, Mary Jane, thank you very much for the presentation. How do you keep your stakeholders engaged? Because this is quite a sensitive topic on which you had your experiments. How did you manage to keep their interest in, uh, in your work? Uh, very good question, Adrian. Um, well, using different types of, of approaches to the workshop, so the, using interactive workshops where they could learn and develop and speak to different people was definitely definitely a positive and the lego <laughs> um the lego was so much fun and working in an office you don't get to play <laughs> Super. so we have one question in the chat i think i'll just going to read it out so um um, in terms of engaging of researchers, are they interested in being involved in RI during the research projects? Um, and as a continuous tool need within the research and development process? So I think it's maybe a similar question to Adrian's, like how to keep them involved. Are they in general, general interested in being involved or was it difficult to get them on board? Um, I think, think that all my participants definitely had a genuine interest um, with a lot of them working in, in research anyway. Um, and the SMEs obviously wanted to make their products better. So if they were able to engage with um, researchers, that, that, that definitely helped their projects. When we were talking about being engaged in future um, research projects, definitely they did say that they would like to be involved from beginning to end of a research project, not just seen as a participant who takes part, but being involved in the design and being involved in the in the write-up stages and every every aspect of it was definitely something that came across in our workshops. I hope that helps. Well, what I what I can say is uh, that we uh, want the our right to be embedded in our practices. So our goal is that uh, researchers in uh, do things in an, a way or do practice their activities or do their research uh, with the with an RRI embedment. So they don't think they are doing RRI. It will be part of. Uh, their processes to be part of the way they do things. That's our goal. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, now I'm doing RRI. No, it's you reflect on things, you become aware of things, you think of way, different ways or better ways to do things, you think of consequences, and then this slowly becomes embedded in the way you do your research. That's how we do things. But yes, not initially, of course, in the beginning, it will be a very conscious process, I believe. But yes, they most of them, most, because there's always those <laughs> who never want to engage in anything new, but uh, most of them, yes, they are uh, pretty much interested, yes. The uh, objective also, sorry, <laughs> the objective is also that they don't see it as another thing to do, not another uh, uh, checklist or another... Um, to accumulate to the other things that they have to do in their research. No, it will be part of the, the things that they already do. That's my answer. Thank you. Um, so Lucia, I hope this answered your question. Seems like it. She says, thank you. Um, if anyone else has any question, 
yeah, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, in the meanwhile, I can maybe also ask uh, one question to Adrian. So um, you're coordinating these, um, yeah, actually four experiments. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on, because they seem so different, like will the results be comparable or like, yeah, what yeah, will you do? <laughs> That's a very good point. Well, actually, uh, what we compared is uh, mostly the quadruple helix engagement process and the outcomes in the sense that we don't necessarily compare on the topic. You know, if you understand what I'm trying to say, we're just comparing the process. So in terms of the comparison, and uh, this is going to be made available while, while, when our deliverable will be published, uh, formally published and uploaded in the portal, because it's an open access document, you can all, everyone that is interested can get access to the specific comparative analysis of the four experiments in the sense that um, you will see there how, for example, each experiment complements the gaps in RRI embedment processes through quadruple helix. So each experiment has done a specific bit of this job, but due to the nature of each institution, their outcomes are, are quite different. So just to give a quick example, in uh, University of Liverpool, of course, because it's a traditional, let's put it as a traditional standard university, okay, you have a proper structure, like a fixed structure with uh, committees, boards, you know, and a proper hierarchy that influences the way RRI is being embedded in the institution, while for open university that has done a text and data mining uh, experiment, they are completely decentralized. So their research teams are completely independent and there is no upper structure that governs the way they do their research. So which means that they have a bit more flexibility, which means that their challenge was even higher to find a proper motivation to adopt RRI because it's not, it's not the top-down thing that tries to impose on them. So all these challenges, as well as many other peculiarities, are explained in this open access report that we'll, we can share with all the interested participants. Just feel free to contact us at any point. I hope that's covered. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think that will be very useful. And um, also one thing to mention maybe is that we also plan to conduct a webinar about the other experiments. So um, that might be also interesting for some of you. Um, yeah, are there other questions? So far, it doesn't look like it. Um, um, yeah, but as Adrian already said, please feel free to contact us at any point if you would like to have more information or we can exchange more experience. Um, and um, then I would say thank you for, to everyone who um, yeah, was speaker here today and also thank you to you as participants for joining us. Um, as I mentioned, we will make the recording available and also the slides. You will find them at our um, fitforai.eu um, slash training website. There we will link to them, um, to the link to our, uh, to our YouTube channel. And we will also, um, there was this uh, event on the Foster portal. So we will also link all slides and upload them on the Foster portal. So I hope um, that was useful and um, thank you for joining us today.